when you have these critical incidents, it ha you have to be able to explain why the body reacts the way it acts. And this is the type of witness that has to come forward in these cases. The state didn't call an expert, we did. He has 20-30 vision. You pointed out that that's not night blindness, but your witness talked about how his vision collapsed that night. Is, is that, you know, does that go to justification? Is that an, you know, is that an adequate excuse for taking a life? I don't think that Daniel Willis's uh, imperfect vision has, is the same thing as his vision collapsing. He's talking about his peripheral visual, vision narrowing into this tunnel vision effect, which happens to anybody with any vision. Um, the 2030 vision is a bunny trail that the state wants to go down. Daniel Willis's vision was not deficient enough um, to fail a driver's license test, to warrant full-time wearing glasses at all times, and it didn't affect his ability to see this threat at 40 feet, shoot Yvette Smith consciously twice, and have both bullets connect with her body. If he was blind and couldn't see, he wouldn't have shot that woman from 40 feet. So is the argument that even though there may not have been a gun there, the perceived reflection off the table, he saw something and therefore he's justified? It is apparent danger. The law of apparent danger is Daniel Willis perceived an immediate deadly threat to him. He acted on that threat. Whether or not the subject, in this case Yvette Smith, happens to be armed at the end of that is absolutely not a relevant fact whatsoever. Is this just a tragic situation then? It is a tragic situation that this woman made the choice to come outside when told to stay inside, that she was intoxicated and her judgment was impaired, and that Willie and Chris Thomas and Amy Vela caused this dangerous situation to put Daniel Willis in.